Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-123 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, 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 everybody. This is Jennifer Solis. And to my right is Kurt Dukoc, Raymond Fletcher, and uh, William Beach Baker is our producer. We have Lawrence on the board making us sound great. Um, guess what? Somebody in Las Vegas got their wish last week. I couldn't speak at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I couldn't speak at all, and uh, now, I'm, now I'm back, and we're going to be talking about the local news and what's going on in Las Vegas. Well, Raymond, you called it first. I was right. I was right. I was right. And I said it during and after the county commissioners held their hearings for medical marijuana applicants it was during the county commission meetings that raymond fletcher said you know what you guys are setting this up for a lawsuit and now the rj comes out that bob coffin thinks the same thing bob coffin thinks that the city and clark county are setting up the state and or and or the municipalities for lawsuits because they're approving their zoning choices for zoning and and denial for others before the state has spoken now i understand if they went through their zoning regulations and laid out what zoning requirements would be however the approval of applications for not only cultivation but you know for dispensaries were premature well not only the, are they premature for well the dispensaries even they're arbitrary and capricious during the Clark count, or I mean, actually during the city meetings, they were approving some people while denying others. They were approving people uh, that had protesters if the protesters weren't in an affluent neighborhood. And not only that, they were approving the planning commission uh, denied some people. And I went to actually one of the people's meetings. They asked me to go and observe. And the HOA meeting you're talking about. It wasn't the HOA meeting, but it was similar to that, something like that. Okay. And you had people who didn't even live in these neighborhoods objecting to the dispensaries or, or the facilities, and they don't even live over there. I remember uh, there was one woman of color that she had, like, blonde hair or something. She got up in, like, five different dispensaries and said, oh, I live there. I live there. Well, I don't want it approved. I don't want it near my kids. But she wasn't saying her zip code, because so this shill could have been from anywhere. You know, and, and, and it's a shame. You know, bet you these same people were not out there opposing the liquor store establishments. Yeah, you know, you know it's odd. A special use permit is a use permit in which that you you have to get approval. You have to give notice to the neighbors that you're going to be in in that area. And these are things like strip clubs, liquor stores, and they're not talking about CVS. CVS can pop up anywhere. But special use permits, you have to give notice to the neighbors, and they can come out and they can speak at your planning commission meetings. So these people at at like what spanish oaks scotch 80s these people were like saying oh you know we totally agree with medical marijuana we just don't want them in our neighborhood and swear to god that's exactly what they said we approve we just don't want it in our neighborhood you know and and, and you know i just i'm dumbfounded i really am you know i don't know the words for the ignorance you know, for the lack of understanding, the lack of compassion, you know, what if some of these people had MS? You know, what if they had Parkinson's? What if they had any any number of, of ailments or illnesses that people use cannabis for? You know, we were, I was in an HOA meeting uh, for Spanish Oaks, 
and then we polled the audience afterwards. More people were in favor of the dispensary going up, but they wouldn't speak because some of the powerhouses of the community were up there um, deriding the whole situation. We don't want it here. We, you know, some of the big old loudmouth witches. And and one of them was saying, oh, I had a hotel in the 60s and people with LSD were having sex on our front lawn. I was like, what? Where are these deluded people coming from? She had to have Alzheimer's or something, some kind of dementia. She was going on and on. I, I really have no idea. But one of, <laughs> one of the applicants, one of the prospective owners, when they had their community meeting, no one from the community showed up to oppose them moving in. And they, they had their meeting in their prospective location. Mm -hmm. So the fact that nobody show up and the planning commission denied them, I, I have sincere questions about the process. I do too, because it was planning and zoning, uh, you know. And Who nobody elected, by the way. Yeah, no, we elected, but the, but the the thing about this is that that kind of bothered me is that um, is that they were very they were very just arbitrary and capricious. They were saying, oh no, we prefer it in an industrial area. Then they would deny somebody from an industrial area, saying, oh, we need it more in a medical district. And this was within the same like sixteen hour, you know, planning and zoning commission meeting. Uh, the other thing is you have a bunch of people show up saying that they opposed it um, and then and then people from planning and zoning were giving people thumbs up in the audience when they denied people. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And so Bob Coffin fears that um, many people, many people are going to sue the city, sue the Clark County even tr maybe try to sue the state of Nevada for allowing this process to go on. Raymond said it first in a Clark County uh, commission meeting. meeting. Yep, and uh, and we talked about it first here on Nevada Cannabis News, saying that this was this was going to happen. And, and now, and that's why I got object. That's why I got up and wrote the book that everyone likes to steal from now, and objected to the first ten applications. And I laid out my case why. I may have only had three minutes. But each three minutes, I said something different. And what I said at the very end, you know, Chairman Sislek said, I, I hear what you're saying, you know, and I, I respect that. You know, well, I'll, I'll do respect to my good friend, Steve. You know, I, I appreciate that acknowledgement. Now, what are you going to do about it? Well, exactly. And what they did was d do what they're going to do anyway. And that's usually what they do. And, and we talked about this. How can they supersede the state with their approval, approve us on. And, you know, they denied so many people that were really deserved of licenses and pass those people up while like choosing people that have been in their district for a long time. There is a, a dispensary down on Sahara that belongs to people that uh, pioneer loans go through. Now, these people have been preying on people that are weak in our community for a long time. People that don't have money. And let me guess, they got approved. They got approved, they didn't even show up. That's what's crazy, but they've been in Lois Tarkanian's district for 20 years. So they must have greased her palms for years. And you know, oh, okay, they're pillars of the community. No, they prey on weak people. You're money lenders. People don't understand that. People are money lenders. They're preying on weak people of Las Vegas and they get approved without even showing up. Look, I'm just an ordinary taxpayer, much like you. And, you know, I will continue to fight injustice and what I see is wrongs against my fellow taxpayer. And look, as a citizen of this great city and this great state, I don't want to pay my hard earned money for lawsuits just because people don't understand common sense. What Bob Coffin is afraid of is that that people that got denied in land use and zoning for no good reason, for no good reason, if you look on their land use and zoning and it's not too close to residential, it's not too close to a, a school and it's not too close to a daycare, then there's no reason that they were denied other than people being arbitrary and capricious about their choices. Now, what if they get approved from state and goes back, then we have to go back to zoning and, and 
you know, youth? Possibly. I don't know. All I know is that the city of Las Vegas sent out an email and then recalled the email and then sent out another email <laughs> stating that uh, October 28th and the 29th, there will be special city council meetings for the, you know, dispensaries and whatnot. Yeah, and so they're, they're expecting to approve or deny after these meetings. Like in secret or something. You know, look, I didn't agree with the way that the county commissioners changed the rules in the middle of the process and then acknowledged on public record that they were changing the rules in the middle of the process. You know, it, it, <laughs> these are our elected representatives. Yeah, well, I mean, they're not procedurally correct some of the time. You've noted that many times when we're in, in the Colorado County Commission meetings and stuff like that. And another thing is the city intentionally left no separation between residential because they didn't feel that there there was a need for it. And then yet the zoning and planning commission, when these people come up and say, oh, it's too close to my house. Well, that's, you know, the city said that's fine. So, I mean, their their job is to not... You know, not decide who gets it. Their job is: does this meet what the city laid down for zoning and planning? Period. It's not to not to make decisions. Yeah, I think some of those planning uh, those planning and zoning people are on a power trip. Most uh, most mo notable was Goins. One of the what? What is it? What are they? A planning official? What are they called, Raymond? Uh, planning commissioners. Okay, one of those plan. He's been in the planning commissioner as a planning commissioner for a long, long, long time, and he has not been chosen by his party to run for anything like city council. And so I think Mr. Goins is just a little bit bitter. Again, no one elected these people, and the only time and the only way that you can have your voice heard is to call your city council representative go to the meetings and say hey you know these are my needs as a patient this is what we have in our community this is what we want and all these people coming out to oppose it where do you live where is your address put that on record i've put mine on record oh many times <laughs> i can almost recite your address <laughs> All right, well, well, moving on to more local news. What's going on? Last Thursday, we had Oktoberfest here in Las Vegas. Yeah, we had uh, the Oktoberfest to show off new items that was put on by uh, the Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association, who we can has worked hand in hand with since they've come around. Uh, it was held over at the Wonder Soil plant over off of uh, Las Town Vegas. Square. Yeah, right by Town Square there. Yeah. And uh, they had uh, they were showing off all sorts of new products there. There were all sorts of great teas and chocolates and and virgin cannabis cocktails. Uh, all the products that they had uh, uh, showing there were uninfused virgin products. They were just showing the packaging and you know stuff like that. Really, Kurt? Because you look really pie-eyed when you came home. Virgins. I heard virgin. <laughs> yep, virgin cocktails. Yeah, Kurt wasn't driving, by the way. He got a ride. He came, you came home, you look kind of like, you were like slit-eyed. Had a long day. <laughs> you liar. Maybe, liar. He, maybe he was hired. I mean, tired. <laughs> I kind of think he was. Uh, wasn't there a, a, a keynote speaker there, Kurt? Uh, yeah, it was Gary, Gary Johnson. Johnson. So. Why don't you tell us about that one time presidential chump, I mean, <laughs> candidate. <laughs> Well, actually, one of the recent things on October 15th via Weed Map News, uh, did Gary Johnson say marijuana cures Ebola? <laughs> Is that what? <laughs> and what exactly did he mean? Former New Mexico governor and one-time presidential candidate Gary Johnson is in the news after comments he made in an interview suggesting that marijuana might provide a cure for Ebola. Johnson is the president and CEO of Cannabis Sativa Incorporated, a company that produces medical and recreational marijuana. Appearing on Monday with Fox News, uh, he was asked by Varney about how the U.S. government is handling the Ebola crisis. Johnson said his company believes marijuana can be used to treat Ebola and that government bureaucracy is preventing researchers from exploring the use of marijuana as treatment for the deadly virus. 
he says, we actually believe we have the efficacy with regard to treating Ebola, said Johnson, prompting Vancey to interrupt him and seek clarification. He accused Johnson of overstating marijuana's medical benefits to boost his company's earning potential. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what? This, I, I ref <laughs> people are cray cray i'm telling you right now more people in africa have died of aids and malaria and starvation than ebola what how many people in liberia have died of ebola in africa like less than a handful this is another tactic of the media to put the scare of god into people for no dang reason in the words of the gr late great whitney houston crack is whack <laughs> Speaking of being whack, the Clark County Commissioner's OK Medical Pot Regulations and Taxes. Woohoo! Well, like like they wouldn't accept money. We know that we know how they are, Raymond, right? You know uh, that <laughs> Absolutely, you know, put the hand out, you know. For the money by the money. Exactly, instead of other people by the people. Clark County Commissioners unanimously approved medical marijuana regulations. For the up-and-coming industry, the 40-page ordinance is the first one for the county's medical marijuana industry. It's intended to regulate all aspects of the industry in unincorporated arid area, uh, which includes dispensaries, cultivation, productions, and labs. You know, back in um, June, they approved 18 applications for dispensaries, yeah. 58 for cultivation, 38 for production, and 5 for laboratory testing. Each medical marijuana establishment, other than testing laboratories, would pay a quarter licensing fees that increase based on a business's earnings. Yeah, and that's how um, usually when you get a business license, that's how uh, that's how your business license um, is determined by how much money you make or expected to make um, in that quarter. And, and so when you are earning money, then you are paying more. Um, speaking of paying more, the state expects a lot of money, big, big bucks, as much as $10 million um, for legislative and taxes. They have a 2% excise tax on wholesale marijuana, another 2% on retail sales. 25% of the excise tax will go to operate the program. The other 75 um, which is an estimate of about 7.5 million, will go to public education. As being the 50th uh, state in education, we really need that money um, to go to our school teachers and our schools and, and, and getting good teachers here and uh, bringing the level of education up. Especially to pay off $100,000, $100 lawsuits against the school board president. But please go ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. All so, right. Another thing, that, that estimate does not include uh, the, the potential revenue from out-of-state residents who might purchase the product while visiting Nevada. Uh, uh, Nevada law does allow individuals in medical marijuana programs in other states to use the dispensaries when they visit. Uh, so we have reciprocity, and we don't even know how much that's going to bring in it depend you know seeing the line out 15 south of 15 every friday that huge line of cars that is coming into las vegas from a medical state from a medical state to a medical state we're saying bring us your tired your aching and your potless <laughs> <laughs> we will provide for them so we, so it's going to be big, big money. All right. We are going to go on a break. And when we come back, we're coming back with our 420 moment. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs. 
bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> that sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. 420 moment is designed to honor somebody who's made made uh, advancements in the movement for us. And this week, uh, we're going to honor Joe Hogan. As many, many of you have probably heard on the news, Joe Hogan recently uh, died uh, after... Uh, died Friday after seven weeks of suffering a massive stroke. So uh, Joe Hogan introduced Assembly Bill 451 last legislative term, which was for uh, recreational use of cannabis. So that didn't go through because we were busy working on the medical use. Uh, but he did quite a bit for us. Sure. Hogan began serving in the Assembly in 2004. He had announced his retirement this year. Um, and he suffered a stroke in August while house hunting in Washington, D.C. area. Uh, Joe Hogan recently had surgery to replace a heart valve, and he was also in early stages of Alzheimer's disease and had two minor strokes several years ago. He decided to retire after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Uh, Hogan was preceded in his death by his wife and his mother and his children. Annie Hogan is, uh, is survived by a second... He is survived by his second wife, Sandy S. Hogan, and his three children, daughter Kathleen Marie Raw, um, Joseph Michael Hogan Jr., and David James Hogan, and five grandchildren. He was born in Fort Dodge, Iowa, August 10, 1937, and he graduated from Notre Dame. He served as an officer in the Navy, and he got his Juris Doctorate degree in George at Georgetown University. He worked for the, uh, the DOD, the Department of Defense, and for NASA. He left in protest because... The, um, because the agency didn't promote African Americans according to merit in the 70s. He also worked for the U.S. Department of Labor, Labor and the Office of Federal Contract Compliance, ensuring that federal contractors did not discriminate. When uh, I met Joe Hogan in assembly, um, he was he was just beginning to show some state uh, st some Alzheimer's. Um, symptoms, and he firmly believe in medical marijuana and its benefits for people. The reason that he wanted it recreational is he believed that it was good for everybody as a preventative. And um, so it's today that we suit you, uh, salute you, Joe Hogan, as our 420 moment. All right. All right, sad news in, in Las Vegas, and Las Vegas has lost one of its cannabis heroes in Joe Hogan. So what else have we got, any, any more news? What do you want? Front. You want some? Uh, what about the twenty eighth and 29th? city council? Yeah, that that's when they're having their hearings for their applications. So uh, at the city council, now they've done the they've done the planning and zoning for uh, the medical marijuana facilities, and whether they got approved or denied at planning and zoning, they still need to go up in front of um, in front of the the city council. Now, I want to call you guys all out to come to the city council on the 28th and 29th. It starts and at 9 a.m. It starts at 9 a.m., but the item, uh, agenda item that uh, I want to talk about is Greenleaf Farms Holdings, the one that's right in front of Spanish Oaks. It's in Ward 1, Lois Tarkanian's ward. So if anybody's out in Ward 1 and they want to have a wellness center, come out and listen to the proposal and to decide if you'd like to have that wellness center in your neighborhood. Um, so make sure that you that you come out to planning and uh, the uh, city council. Look at our website for the times to come out for Greenleaf Farms Holdings. 
Yeah, this this application is much more than a just a dispensary. They're they're planning a whole wellness destination there with uh, with health foods and and yoga and and community access television broadcasting and and the whole shebang. It's 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 a wonderful wonderful plan they have and they're kind of being discriminated against by some of the residential over there. So come on out and let them know that you're for this application. For sure. And we'll post the times um, on our meetup site and also on our Facebook. Uh, you can access at www.wecan702.org. Uh, Wecan702 forward slash, or no, uh, meetup.com forward slash Wecan702 or our Facebook, Wecan702. And you can get all the information about the City Council and the Clark County Commissioner meetings. All and, right. And other local news next week friday not this friday but the next one up is halloween and we can will be participating again in the las vegas halloween day parade for the fifth time for, for the, the fifth, fifth year we've been out there every year so uh we invite all of our listeners and all of the fellow supporters out there to come on down and march with us in the parade get to get your costumes on and come on out and have some fun with us and what's going on <laughs> and what's going on on sunday kurt Oh, we're going to be decorating the float. Yeah, Sunday we're having a, a float decoration party and potluck uh, to decorate the float. It's uh, up on our Facebook site and our meetup site right now with the information. Uh, we're starting at, I believe, 1 o'clock, is it? No, we're starting at 11. 11, 11, 11 o'clock. 11 to 2.30, 11 to 3.30, I think I is think it. it's 11 to 3.30. And the reason we're doing it as an afternoon thing, because we want to have light to decorate the float. We want to do it early enough so that, uh, so that you can you know get to work the next day after you party and it is a potluck so make sure to bring your dish and there's no charge for this one uh so come on out and help us decorate our float is going to be uh, we have a magic carpet and then we have a trailer in the back and the trailer in the back we're going to decorate as an oasis uh named patience in paradise or and also together we can so if you have a business and you'd like to promote it with this uh with the float you can um, put three to five hundred dollars down and, and uh, you can get your name on the banner and stuff like that but if you just like to march it's free come on down Ooh, can, can, can I lounge and get my tan on in this oasis yes you can I, I was thinking of dressing you up like the genie on the <laughs> magic carpet <laughs> uh, well speaking of genie I'm channeling my Dion Warwick and psychic friends <laughs> alright you know what I've always wondered about her she was busted for pot, so either she's not, either her friends aren't psychic or they don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> Got an email earlier today um, from the state, and that's what prompted my psychic friend's feelings. Uh oh. Uh, this Friday, October 24th, if you want your business name to be listed with its score and ranking, you need to print and attach a consent uh, release and send it electronically back to the state by the 24th. I have a feeling. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. That uh, the, the awardees, the winners, I don't know how do you call them. But will the chosen few. The chosen few will be announced within the next two weeks. I believe that I believe that you're right. Uh, you, our psychic feelings are, are correct on this one. Um, what by the fifth of November? Exactly. Remember, remember the fifth of November. You heard it first. <laughs> that you will get uh, you will get news about the state's awardees for their uh, for the application. I I I also suspect by the sixth of November we're going to start seeing lawsuits. <laughs> All right, we've got a new Department of Justice official, uh, Vanita Gupta, the senior American Civil Liberties Union attorney, is going to act uh, is going to take over the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. She's already years ahead of Attorney General Eric Holder on the issue of legalization and regulation of marijuana. Um, 
She wrote a CNN column last month praising legalization and taxation of marijuana in Washington and Colorado. Her column focused on the story of Jeff Mazinski, a Missouri man who was sentenced to life in prison for buying a few pounds of marijuana. Gupta agreed that there was a much better op option than in Colorado incarceration. The solution is clear. Instead of taxpayers spending millions of dollars on this unnecessary uh, enforcement, she said, keeping folks like Mazinski in prison for the rest of their lives, states could follow R Colorado and Washington by taxing and regulating marijuana and, and investing saved enforcement dollars on education, substance abuse treatment, and prevention of other health um, problems. Although Eric Holder allowed w the Washington and Colorado reforms to go into effect, um, he seems to be slowly evolving on this issue, and he outright he hasn't outright endorsed eagle, either legalization or decriminalization of marijuana. Uh, the, the past spring, the Attorney General told the Huffington Post that it was hard to tell if pot uh, will be legal around the country in a decade. He also avoided directly endorsing decriminalization in the District of, Com of Columbia, his hometown. But he signaled last month that he doesn't believe marijuana belongs in the same law enforcement category as heroin, which it currently sits in. Then he should do something about it rather than moving slower than molasses in January. <laughs> but I don't know about this Vanita Gupta lady. I mean, on MSNBC, she said, quote, What's happening in Colorado and Washington are actually racial justice victories. They are. They are. Because if you look at the people that are arrested for marijuana, they are not, they are not whitey. Okay. They're not European Americans. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm speaking as whitey myself. I can say that. Well, Gupta is 39. She was born in Philadelphia to immigrant parents and, and is praised by a wide array of political activists for her civil rights work, especially on prison reform, an issue which liberals and conservatives have found common ground. Given her background, the move to civil rights division is in many ways a natural one. And interesting, interestingly, much of her interest in uh, disparities reflects concern over racial disparities in the war on drugs. She wrote in 2011, the war on drugs has been a war on communities of color. Well, the original word marijuana is a slang word, um, is a slang word, and it was like, be, it was used against Mexican Americans. Um, the you know cannabis and cannabis sativa and cannabis indica were on all of the little bottles of tincture and stuff like that sold here in America. The the slang word marijuana and that's the reason that we like to use the word cannabis because that's that's the proper word for the plant. It's giving the plant respect and it's also giving people respect. I'm just curious to see whether she will be asked about her position on marijuana laws during her. Uh confirmation hearings in front of the Judiciary Committee. So that, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, what she has to say about that, huh? Speaking of lawmakers, All right. Arizona Republican Representative Ethan Orr suggests making marijuana legal to aid the state's budget. Never mind the patients. Let's legalize it to fix money. our budget. Money grubbing SOB. For the money, by the money. According to Tucson Weekly, Representative Orr is looking at Colorado's recent venture and the taxes, licenses, and fees that have brought the state more than $7 million. Arizona Republic reports the Arizona Revenue Projections released late Tuesday to the Legislature's Finance Committee predict the state will end this budget year with a $520 million deficit and possibly up to a billion dollar deficit in the coming fiscal year of 2016. Or stated, given the massive budget shortfall we're facing, we need to look at revenue and I think this is a logical place we need to look. I think it's time to have an intelligent conversation about legalization. Or continued, to state that lawmakers should consider his proposal before supporters in the effort to make marijuana legal take their measures before voters in 2016. That would be awesome. 
Um, the State Department's top drug warrior, William Brownfield, he also is changing his tune a little bit, saying federal government must tolerate making ma uh, marijuana legal. Um, William Brownfield, the Assistant Secretary of State for International law, Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, calls for flexibility in interpreting anti-drug treaties. How could I, a representative of the government of the United States of America, be intolerant of a government that permits any experimentation with legalization of marijuana if two of the 50 states in the United States of America have chosen to walk down that road? So basically he's calling out people for being hypocrites. The Deputy Attorney General's words uh, were that of the federal government will not intervene in the application of the laws of Washington and Colorado on marijuana legalization, but will monitor and hold them responsible performance for performance in eight specifically designated areas. They have national interest um, to ensure that this does not cause harm to the citizens. And, and it doesn't, it's been proven again and again and again, but the United States of America reserves the right and can any time, if it chooses, enforce the law against marijuana and cannabis cultivation, production, sales, purchase, and consumption in Washington and Colorado. The Deputy Attorney General in the public document has asserted that for now we're not going to uh, do that unless it crosses the line in eight specifically identified categories in those two states. You know what those identified categories are, right? The Cole Memo. Right. Yep, the coal memo. It has to do with the coal memo about about children, about keeping it safe, about you know regulation, and very you know very strict regulation of it. Um, that that you know. So there there are many many different points. So times are the changing. The mm. times are changing. Yes, they are. And here's a good a feel good story. Uh, Humboldt firefighters save the weed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, first responders, for your service. Exactly. In a story with a man bites dog feel for most Americans, firefighters in California's Humboldt County entered a burning structure that contained a drying marijuana harvest and carried the weed to safety and then left the plants at the scene when they departed. They oh, did hallelujah. What? <laughs> they, they did, did what? It. Yep. It is reported that a member of the local sheriff's department was also on the scene at, but took no action. Humboldt County, along with Mendocino and Trinity counties, are part of Northern California's famed Emerald Triangle, which is considered America's number one marijuana-producing locale. Perhaps that's why marijuana was not removed when the firefighters left. But more likely, it was the, the, the two valid physician-approved cannabis permits attached to a tree on the property. Say the weed! Say the weed! Fire Battalion Chief Marty Hobbs said the cause of the fire remains under investigation, but a fan in the room where the plants were drying is, is the sus suspected source. Hobbs said if there are enough pers personnel present at a fire scene, firefighters routinely carry people's belongings to safety. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stick one of those little stickers on my window with the dogs and the cat and the chickens. And a bunch of little weed plants at the bottom. <laughs> there you go. He said if there's anything of value, including computers, pictures, they'll start taking anything out to protect it from damage. In this case, the firefighters carried the plants outside, placed them on a tarp. Hobbs did not place a value on the crop or comment on how it may have been affected by the fire. I wonder how many of those plants needed mouth to mouth. Hey, I bet you that deputy didn't take any action, like it said, but I bet you he sure as heck took a toke. <laughs> Break him off a piece. He's like, oh, no, this has smoky flavor now. Well, it's kind of nice to see, see that the, for once they didn't add a little insult to the injury, you know. Bad enough that these people just suffered a fire. Now we're going to take away their medicine. You're absolutely right. And or press charges. <laughs> yeah, really. Colorado marijuana revenues hit a new high. Ha ha. ha no ha. pun intended. New figures, uh, <coughs> new figures from high. the Colorado Department of Revenue show that recreational marijuana sales continue to climb uh, back in August, the most recent month for which data is available. Recreational sales totaled approximately $34.1 million up from 29.3 the previous month. Medical marijuana also jumped sharply after several months of flat or declining sales. Medical sales figures were just under the recreational total of 33.4 million. 
Oh, I got a little plan. Part of, the, <laughs> part of the challenge is that medical marijuana is taxed at a lower rate than recreational marijuana, leading to a significant price difference. Total tax revenues from both medical and recreation continued to edge upwards. The state took in about $7.5 million from both markets in August for the amount of $45 million this year so far. I don't have glaucoma anymore because I got high. Oh, yeah. We're going to get pulled off of YouTube again for five seconds. <laughs> all right. All right. Other news out of Colorado. Uh, you've heard about the, the people supposedly overdosing on edibles because they're too strong or eating too many. The only thing that happens when you OD on edibles is you throw up. Because you're a dumb dumb and don't know how to, how to eat them. Yeah, just yeah, well, just like I mean, well, not like alcohol because your liver doesn't get permanently damaged. Well, they've kind of they've kind of gone the other way now. Several companies have begun offering edible products with very small doses of THC in them in order to allow people who have low tolerance or little experience with the substance be able to use it <laughs> without the potential of becoming overly impaired. So you know what I call that? I call those Kurt cookies. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> They're, they're, they're a light dose. They call them rookie cookies for people who are not experienced in eating <laughs> medical grade marijuana. <laughs> and, then, and then you have my cookies. They're the wookie cookies because you go, ah. <laughs> it, it's now a new market and people are looking for something that won't get them so inebriated they're, uh, that they're not functional, uh, said Holborn Sproul of the Growing Kitchen, which makes the rookie cookie and is phasing out some of its stronger offerings. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Well, I think it's a good idea. I mean, they sh they should come in all sorts of doses, and the the fact that a lot of these edibles come and it's it's a candy bar that if you eat the whole candy bar, you will be couch locked and, and incapacitated. Whereas or vomit. Yeah, I mean, they 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 shouldn't make it to where you just have one little square. They should make edibles, you know, where a candy bar comes in fifty milligrams, hundred milligrams, two hundred milligrams, and you can choose your dosing. Well, I mean, the first time I tried Kurt's cookies, I was like, this is this is a medible? This is a medible? Really? Really? Stop your pain, though. Well, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm hungry. I need a cookie. So we're going to take a break so I can get something to munch on right quick, and we'll be back with Nevada Cannabis News. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Finally, Nevada Medical Marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll-free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're coming back from a uh, break for Nevada Cannabis News, and we have a story out of California. California teens are benefiting from pot reform. You know how they all at the city and the county commission meetings, they start talking about, oh, our children are going to suffer. Our children are going to suffer. They're going to drive by and see it. 
They're going to drive by and see the sign and know what it is. That came out of a doctor's mouth. I'd like to punch that girl in the neck. <laughs> but uh, she's, I'm a doctor from Harvard, and I believe in its medicinal uses, but I don't want my daughter seeing it. Yeah, don't educate your children. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tiger Mama. <laughs> anyway, um... In 2011, there were predictions that the state's teenagers in California would suffer all manner of social and legal problems. But a new report issued by the Center of Juvenile and Criminal Justice, so this isn't a rinky-dink place, found that the actual results in the Golden State were very positive for teens, including lower arrest rates and lower dropout rates. Imagine that. Ritalin doesn't keep them in school, but pot might. <laughs> all right. Well, a lot of them go to school just to get their pot. That's what my daughter went to school for. She she told me flat out that I said I said you're so sick. Why are you going to school? And she said, Well, that's where I score, mom. I'm like out of the mouth of a 16 year old. I'm like, Oh my god. You know, I love my daughter, and I always wanted her to tell me the truth. But the stuff that she would tell me would just give me heart palpitations. <laughs> All right, so. The report, like and others like it, may make it harder for opponents of legalization to fight the advance of marijuana reform across the country. Those doomsday and naysayers are getting proven wrong. Reform madness. Reform madness. <laughs> Here's a direct quote from the report. Marijuana decriminalization in California has not resulted in harmful consequences for teenagers, such as an increased crime, overdose, drug overdose, or driving under the influence, or school dropout. In fact, California teenagers are showing improvement in all risk areas after reform. Bam! There you go. What do you say to that? No, we've been saying this for a while. I mean, don't kid yourself. This this is a readily available out there on the streets. It's it's out there. The kids the kids are using it. By passing medical marijuana laws, you're not going to increase teen use. By regulating and taxing it, you're actually going to decrease teen use. So these people that are all out here, all up in arms against against all of this, uh, are really fighting the wrong battle. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Also in California, a federal, according to a federal judge, should marijuana be classified as one of the most dangerous drugs? What? Testimony regarding the constitutionality of the federal statute designating marijuana as a Schedule One controlled substance will be taken on Monday, October 27th, in the U.S. District Court for Eastern U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of California in the case of United States versus Pickard. Oh, speaking up, you know what? I got I got another appointment. <laughs> I'm the political director for uh, Las Vegas Normal. Congratulations! So I will be having uh, I will be having the choices or the cannabis friendly choices of cannabis out. Uh, within like a couple of days and I'll post them up on the weekend page. I'll give them to the normal page also. These are just choices that have shown uh, friendly, you know, being friendly to cannabis use and or and there's a lot of judges on there. Um, so we'd like to really make sure that these judges, uh, you know, are for cannabis use before we vote from them. And we, and we absolutely have to be uh, well well uh, informed on who we select in this election. But the defense is bringing Dr. Carl Hart and retired physician Philip Denny and Greg Carter. He's the medical director of St. Louis Rehab Institute in Spokane, Washington. They will testify that accepted science is inconsistent with the notion that cannabis meets the criteria for Schedule 1. Dr. Hart declared, it is my opinion that including marijuana in Schedule 1 is counter to all the scientific evidence in a society that uses and values empirical data. And then the government is going to call Bertha Madras, who is a professor of psychobiology at Harvard. And then the former director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy under George W. Wow. 
This is the first time in recent memory that a federal judge has granted an evidentiary hearing on a motion challenging the statute which classifies cannabis to be one of the most dangerous illicit substances in the nation. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. I expect a follow-up report on that one, man. I, I definitely will because it's going to be interesting to see what, what the federal judge rules. Wow. Well, that's good. Have you guys heard the new Afro Man song? The new version that that has come out from Normal and uh, uh, and it, it kind of switches the because I got high into a really positive remix. Have you guys heard it? Yep. Yeah. It's been viewed on YouTube uh, over 1.5 million times as of Friday afternoon. Wow. And and some of the some of the lines are now I don't have glaucoma because I got high. I used to smoke cigarettes, but then I got high. Now I'm playing basketball and jogging, and I know why. Hey, because I got high, because I got high, because I got high. <laughs> now I don't need all my friends da, 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 playing that da, over and da, over. Da. Next yeah. thing you know, one of my friends is like, hey, I heard you got a radio, and then start playing that. <laughs> so Come, he, Keith. So partnering with Weed Maps and Normal, uh, Afro Man did a remix putting a positive spin on Because I Got High. Um, it's because what it does for him personally. He said, I, I, I really wanted to know what scientists and people have discovered about it. Um, and so he, he really wanted people to get the message about science and education on this. It's informative, it's educational, and I learned a lot myself. And I think people need to learn about it, he said. So let's ponder. Let's think. Let's get high. <laughs> it helps you do that. So I'd like to give a shout out to one of our newest advocates out here mtv reality star has been battling cancer and discovered medical marijuana so we have a new advocate coming in here as a list of uh add one more to the list of celebrities speaking out from first-hand knowledge about the benefits of medical marijuana reality tv star dm brown tells people magazine magazine that vaporizing the plant reduces her pain and is helping her gain weight before chemotherapy for colon cancer she says she asked her doctor about it, and be totally honest, she never smoked before in her life, she tells people, but she keeps hearing everyone mention it. She says, I'm taking all these synthetic drugs, and they're not working, so I thought I would try it. Well, you know, somebody needs to talk to her about the Gershon diet. Uh, that's an all-natural diet that's shown to reverse cancer. Uh, also, they what they do, caffeine enemas to, like, um, to unplug like the the bile ducts in your in your colon um that along with rso should really help her not just smoking and yeah. so this is she's doing it as a reactionary measure to chemo is that correct well she she explains that she started to vaporize marijuana to help her deal with the de debilitating pain of cancer and surgeries and she says it's the only thing that helps with the pain and it's helped her appetite as well so one of the side effects she started using for pain is it actually helped her with her appetite and helped her eat well, somebody should talk to her about rso because the rso treatment um, combined with a super clean organic diet and of course the caffeine enemas that like raymond's got both of his eyebrows raised up like what <laughs> um really do work uh this diet was proved in what the 1930s or 1940s exactly i am not putting coca-cola <laughs> up my up my bum i'm sorry i'm just not starbucks, <laughs> starbucks works better <laughs> <laughs> That's a place that and that's a place it needs to be too, huh? Over in Florida. Oh, we got one minute, oh, so well we need to go quick. We yeah. will do Florida next week then. So what do we got going on this Sunday? We got going on our potluck. It's uh, off of Valley View and Sahara, but it's also to to decorate our float for the Halloween Day Parade that's on Friday. You can get all that information. Not this Friday, but the following Friday. The you can get that, all that information on our meetup or our Facebook page. All right. We'll see you guys uh, decorating the float. Uh, it's our potluck party on Sunday. Uh, if you want to come out on the 28th and 29th, check our Facebook and our meetup for the times and the, and the meeting place for Greenleaf Farms Holdings or any other and, and my friends over at New Leaf. 
and your friends over at New Leaf. And that's with Sean Luce. He's with the Berkeley Patients Group also. Right. Until then, we'll be back next week. Thank you for listening. <laughs>